More than 5,500 students live in university buildings just like this one, Brook Tower. So when danger strikes, it's important for students to know how to get out of the building fast. I'm Erica Moke, and coming up next on WBU News, I'll tell you why drivers are putting the brakes on new development. This roll of paper is 110 feet long. That's about the length of the planes the Big 12 teams travel on. Now this airport will expand their runway to 7,000 feet, so planes this big can land and take off safely. Morgantown officials are happy that the city keeps growing, but they don't like that the construction is adding to the already ongoing traffic problem. When the plane crashed into the World Trade Center on September 11th, people were trapped in stairways just like this one. I'm Eric Moke, and coming up next on WBU News, I'll tell you how university officials are making sure that doesn't happen here. WBU News starts now. It can cost anywhere between $30 and $300 to replace street signs. So to prevent theft and reduce cost, the city is resorting to plastic wraparound street signs, like the ones here on Grant Street. But as you can see, they don't stand up as well. I recently went to a mock emergency drill to find out how university officials are making sure students stay safe in their home away from home. This is the sound students hear when it's time to drop what they're doing and get out of the building. Very nervous, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind is 9-11. Um, it's a lot of miscommunication, it's kind of hectic too with all these people, you know, no one really knows what to expect. But some students still worry that in a real emergency, things won't go so smoothly. They would get into a panic probably, and I feel like someone probably would have gotten hurt coming from all those stairs. Studies show when the planes hit the World Trade Center on September 11th, many people inside did not leave immediately because they weren't sure what to do or where to go. Nothing can take the place of actually walking through a process and, and leaving the building and, and rehearsing as if it were real. More than 5,500 students live in university buildings just like this one, Brook Tower. So when danger strikes, it's important for students to know how to get out of the building fast. Research from the National Institute of Standards and Technology say only 10% of those inside the World Trade Center had ever entered a stairwell as part of an emergency drill. Thanks to the practices at WBU, students are familiar with every exit route possible. The university is landing in the Big 12 Conference. Now fans are concerned about traveling. Since we're going to have to be traveling more for the away games and, you know, Texas and Kansas and stuff like that, you know, that's not just an overnight trip, that's a couple day trip. And they're looking to the local airport for answers. Well, if they would expand this airport like rumor mill has it, then we would certainly be able to have more options here in the Morgantown area. The expansion of the Morgantown Airport has been in the works for more than 10 years, and officials say the timing couldn't be better. This will be a viable option for West Virginia University, but it is quite consistent with the growth orientation and the market demand for the airport. Right now, the runway at the Morgantown Airport is 5,199 feet long. This roll of paper is 110 feet long. That's about the length of the planes the Big 12 teams travel on. Now this airport will expand their runway to 7,000 feet, so planes this big can land and take off safely. And airport officials are anxious for the arrival of these teams and their fans. Oklahoma, um, Texas, you know, they're big travelers. When their team travels, they travel with them. So we're looking forward to having those folks come to Morgantown. As for Mountaineer fans traveling to away games, to some, the answer's easy. West Virginia has a very huge supportive alumni and a lot of fans and people love to travel now, so I don't think there'll be any problem with that. Officials say WVU's move to the Big 12 isn't the main reason for the expansion, but it's definitely a push to get the project off the ground. Street signs. Drivers and pedestrians use them to get around, but some students like Chris use them to decorate their apartments. They're so easy to steal. Literally, all you have to do is just like pull on them and it comes right down. So, I mean, it's just so easy to do and it's cool to 
it's cool to have like a university or like a high street sign. That's cool to have. So why not if it's that easy? It might be easy, but it costs the city big bucks to replace these stolen signs. The price around 50 to $60,000 a year. This simple prank causes a lot of problems for not only the community, but for visitors as well. And to some, taking these dorm room decorations may seem like a rite of passage. But if caught, you could face some serious penalties. Well, if we caught someone in the act of actually stealing a street sign, uh, what would happen was they would be arrested, they would be processed, and they would be transported uh, before a magistrate to receive a bond, or they'd be booked into the uh, regional jail. It can cost anywhere between $30 and $300 to replace street signs. So to prevent theft and reduce cost, the city is resorting to plastic wrap around street signs like the ones here on Grant Street. But as you can see, they don't stand up as well. The city has to spend money to put the signs back up and I mean, it does, I guess it inconveniences people and I do feel bad about it, but I, at the time, I guess I just don't really think about that. And because of the amount of students in the area, officials say in the past, stealing street signs was somewhat accepted. Now they hope stricter penalties will put a stop to this college prank. When you drive through Morgantown, you'll probably see lots of construction, lined by even more traffic. I recently hit the streets to find out why Morgantown's new development has caused some serious backups. Beechurst Avenue, this is the, one of the main fairs coming into town, look at it. Morgantown resident Matt Riffon works along one of the city's busiest streets and says he's frustrated the growth of the town has caused a new set of problems. It's like there was a small town here and they popped a university in it. And then somebody got an idea, hey, we need to do something about traffic. Morgantown City Manager Terrence Moore agrees the city's infrastructure can't keep up with its expansion. It's an inconvenience, obviously, so there are some impacts to the traffic conditions as far as the sidewalk go. But plans are already in the works to make driving around Morgantown less of a hassle. We are engaging with the state of West Virginia to hopefully get to a much more proactive place in terms of making certain that infrastructure conditions meet the needs of a growth-oriented community. Morgantown officials are happy that the city keeps growing, but they don't like that the construction is adding to the already ongoing traffic problem. Officials say the new development is bringing in millions of dollars, but the expenses that go into keeping up with the new growth means Morgantown isn't exactly making money. Are these people just getting paid how much to debate it and figure out whether it actually needs it done or not? Yeah, how much are they getting paid? Yes, it needs done. There's no discussion about it. But for the time being, traffic will still back up and drivers will continue to watch Morgantown grow while they're stuck behind the wheel. While updating infrastructure will take time, officials say it is their job to strengthen and expand the area's economy. So far, more than $3 million have already been invested in the Beechhurst University Avenue project. The plan is to make Morgantown one of the very best places to live. It's official, papers have been signed, handshakes have been made, and WVU has joined nine other schools as part of the Big 12 Conference. Yeah. You may recall anthrax laced mail threatened several people just one week following the attacks on America, infecting 22 people. Five died as a result of anthrax inhalation, and the FBI considers it one of the most complex cases in law enforcement history. The American Cancer Society estimates nearly 1,600,000 people will be diagnosed with cancer in the United States this year alone. While funding has yet to be approved by the Federal Aviation Administration, officials estimate the project will cost more than $30 million and construction will not begin before 2015. WVU News reporter Ashton Morrow went to see the fun firsthand. You can also watch any of our shows on YouTube. The address is at the bottom of your screen. Plus, follow our reporters on Twitter. Thanks for watching WVU News.